The Unworld world gives you 10 days to do as much exploring as you can before the world comes to an end. You can slow down the red fog by completing all of the main quests slash red beams of light found in the Unworld world, but before we begin exploring the world we should make some preparations first. So that's what the first part of the guide is going to cover. I recommend buying all heal elixirs in Sacred Harbor and then teleporting to Checkpoint Rest Town to forge as many as you want. I would try to forge at least 20 plus of these elixirs uh, as they are very useful to have on you, especially for the unmoored world. Don't forget to rest at the nearby bench about four times so that the forge can have your all elixir portion ready. When you are ready to access the unmoored world, trigger the event where you are riding on the dragon's back. You will need to make your way to the dragon's heart and then go into your inventory and select the empowered God's Bane blade to stab the dragon in the heart. A new cutscene will play. The first thing you should do in this world is head past the C4 Shrine until you reach this location on the map. Once you are here, talk to the NPC to start the quest. The Dragon Forged NPC can now be found in this location. He has access to some of the best weapons and armor in the game that cost Worm's Life Crystals. You can also enhance your equipment further and improve your vocation and skills from him. Now remember to touch the nearby Poor Crystal so that you can teleport back here. Don't worry about fairy stones because enemies drop tons of fairy stones in this world. This world is the best place to farm fairy stones in the entire game, especially if you plan on taking your save file into New Game Plus. You can also plunder enemies for a chance of getting even more fairy stones if you have a thief in the party. Now we should get our pawn. Teleport to Batal and head to the Forbidden Magic Research Lab. If you can't remember how to get here, set the quest marker, finding the pawn, and then head to the Flamebearer Palace. And once inside the palace, take the stairs down to the left. Once you pass the dragon statue, you'll be in front of the Laboratorium, workshop number one. From here, just head up the stairs to Faces' chamber and you'll find your pawn lying down in the bed. Once you have your pawn back, it's now time to start clearing some of the red beams. We are going to start with the one in Batal since we are already here. You will notice the red beams marked on the map for you. Interact with the Batal red beam and draw the God's Bane blade to trigger a quest a scholarly pursuit. Start the quest by following Faces and clear the monsters that are in your way. As you keep following Faces, you will eventually reach the dragon. You can now ignore all the enemies at this point and run straight for the dragon to slay it. Now we are going to talk to Manella. She normally spawns here, but if she doesn't show up here, then that's because she likely died during the last quest we did. Check to see if her body is lying around close by and revive her if she doesn't show up for you. Once you talk to her, you will start the quest Civil Unrest. You can settle the fight near your house with violence. Glint and Nomos can be settled peacefully by telling them both are right and giving food to their kids. You can find some food up at the merchant's ward if you don't have any. Scario and Nabral can be settled peacefully by watching them duel so agree to bear witness. Once all three conflicts are settled, talk to Manala and then head to the Flamebearer Palace, Empress's chamber to complete the quest. Next, we need to talk to Brent located in the Star Drop Inn in Vernworth to receive a new quest. We are tasked with speaking to Seven. Head to Vernworth's castle and speak to him. Next, head up to Deza's chambers and kill her. Pick up her body and show it to Seven. You slew my mother! What possessed you to do such a thing? Carry Seven with you to the yellow marker on the map. Once at the marker, talk to the NPC and then attack him. And he will flee. Once he flees, Tata 7 to complete the quest. Since we carried him with us, we don't need to travel all the way back to his room again. Paid to the last of our People are While we are still in Bornworth, let's clear the red portal located here on the map. The portal will spawn a boss dragon, so make sure you come prepared to deal with the enemies leading up to this location and the boss itself. The strongest party for this is to have three sources with Meteoron, but with the Magic Archer class, you can use Martyr's Bolt to also make quick work of the boss, but this will have required you to have stocked up on all heal elixirs prior to entering the endgame. If you have a thief in your party, they have the potential to steal tons of Worm's Life Crystals as an added bonus. Next, let's teleport to Sacred Arbor. The first thing we are going to do here is take care of this next red portal. When you touch the red portal, you will be introduced to another boss fight with a dragon. After the boss fight, talk to Glinder to start the quest Wandering Roots. 
Now talk to Talison and make sure you have a pawn that knows Elvish. Exhaust all of his dialogue. If you don't have high affinity with the elves, then you will have to come back to this quest later. I rested at the inn for one day to have a backup save file at the end in case I need it. Now let's finish the other quest and we'll come back to this one. Next, teleport to the evacuation site where we will need to defeat a golem to start the next quest, Shepherd of the Ponds. Follow the NPC to start the quest. Once the quest starts, head to this location on the map and use the key. Once inside, pick up the diminished god's way and head back to talk to Henrik to complete the quest. Next, head to Volcanic Island Camp. As you approach the Volcanic Island Camp, if you defeated Talos early, then you will see a new cutscene where your pawns take control of Talos and a dragon will appear from the sky. As you get closer to the camp, another cutscene will play, with Talos destroying the dragon, but then another dragon appears. Now head to the yellow marker on the map to watch the battle and a new cutscene will eventually play, and the quest will be complete. Now head inside the Volcanic Camp and talk to Ernesto to start the importance of aiding Ernesto quest. We will now need to head to Windwalker's home. It should already be marked on the map for you. You will now need to guide the denizens to the camp. Once you guide them to the camp, you will be tasked to talk to Lamont. He is heading to the geyser helmet. Try to catch up to him and talk to him. His end location gets marked on the map with a yellow marker if you can't find him. You can choose any of the dialogue options that you want. I chose the first one. Now head back to talk to Ernesto to complete the quest. Now let's teleport back to Sacred Arbor and rest at an inn. Once you rest, talk to him again, and if he still won't evacuate, then that means you will need to rest again. Keep resting until he agrees and the quest completes. The next part of the guide focuses on getting all of the unique pieces of armor in the game. The Hood of Darkness is found in the Namus Village at this location here. The Dominator's armor is located northwest of Vernworth. You will need to defeat the Chimera to loot it. The Summoner's Crown is found past the Vernworth Southern Ruins where we defeated one of the Red Portal Dragons earlier in the guide. The Conqueror's Sabatons is found northwest of Vermont at this location shown on the map. We mustn't allow ourselves to become complacent. Valorous Helm can be purchased from Bodas in Bakbatal. If you already evacuated Bodas, you can find him at the shrine. Grab him and teleport him to his armory in back the hall so that you can purchase from his stock again. From Sacred Arbor, head down to this location here. The Predator's Mall can be found under a bridge. The Vanguard Graves are found close to Gurkle Cavern. You will need to head from Har Village and follow the road leading to Gurkle Cavern as shown on the map. Once inside the cavern, keep progressing until you get out and you'll find the graves inside the chest here. From Checkpoint Rest Town, follow the road leading down to this location here on the map. This is where you'll find the Agamemnon Gay Leah in the chest. Follow the road west of Bakwatal, and once you are close to the tomb of Renu, just cross down here and follow the path down to where the Promethean Hood is located. The Monarch's Crown is found by teleporting to Volcanic Island. As you can see on the map, the item is very close by, so just follow where I marked on the map. The Assassin's Breaches are found by following the road northwest of the Volcanic Island Camp and southwest of this Riftstone and Campfire. The rest of the armor is purchased from Godstaffer. If you evacuated him from the Sacred Arbor, he is found setting up shop at the Shrine. Besides the endless amounts of fairy stones that you can farm, you can also farm Elder Strite from the Purple Wisps. If you need this rare material now, is the time to collect some while you are farming fairy stones.
when you are finished exploring the Unworld world, make sure that you interact with the final portal before time runs out to trigger the ending of the game.